All right. So again, photosynthesis is broken into two parts. We've just talked about the light dependent reactions. How we store energy from the light to generate ATP and NADPH. These are high energies that we can then put over here to power a process we call the Calvin cycle. Now, the Calvin cycle historically, when I took biology, and mind you, that's not that long ago. Um, when I took biology, we referred to them as the light process, of, or the light reactions and the dark reactions. And, and we've shied away from that. We try to not refer to them as light reactions and dark reactions because that implies that it has to occur in the dark. It does not. It does not have to occur in the dark. Um, so we call this the light independent reactions or the Calvin cycle named for uh, the gentleman who is credited as doing a lot of the work finding and determining how this actually works. Uh, sometimes some people also refer to Benson and I, I don't know much about these two scientists. You're welcome to Wikipedia them and learn more. If, if that strikes some interest in you, if that helps you put pieces together, please do that. Um, I, I'm not the person to ask about who, who Calvin and Benson are, but we call it the Calvin cycle. What does the Calvin cycle do? The Calvin cycle pulls in CO2 and it generates this G3P, right? GA3P or G3P, which is just a three carbon sugar that we can use to put together and make six carbon sugars like glucose and fructose. Right? These can occur in the absence of light. They don't have to occur in the dark, but they can occur in the absence of light. They can occur in the dark. All right, so wonderful, beautiful diagram of the Calvin cycle in depth, in detail. Um, it's broken into three phases, okay? Let me talk about these. Uh, but what I want you to notice is, is we're putting in energy here. We're starting with ATP, putting in and breaking one of the phosphates off, releasing that energy and generating ADP. So step one, we're coming in with, um, you're bringing in this, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, rubulose. Phosphate, rub rubulose by phosphate, I believe it is. So there's two phosphates on this. Rubulose is five carbon sugar. And we add, we've got several molecules of it. We add some CO2 to that and break them apart. And you generate six molecules of this three carbon compound. Add ATP um, through this, again, this carbon fixation process. Where basically, we're ending up with more carbon and we started with, we started with 15 here, three, five carbon chains. We add three more carbons and some carbon dioxide. Now I've got six, three carbon chains. That's 18 carbons here, where I had 15. Now I've got 18 and what, how does that happen? Well, I added three carbon dioxides and I broke this down into six, three carbon chains. And then we add energy to it through ATP. We go through the process, uh, step two, the, the reduction. So we make this a little more um, stable, if you will. And then I've got six molecules of this G3P. One of them can go out of the cycle and be used for generation of glucose or other compounds that we need. So nice, simple, stable three carbon chain that I can kick out um, as energy storage. The additional five molecules go back in. Um, they get turned back into this rubulose um, compound through the, um, through the rest of the cycle. Okay, and, and there, uh, <clears throat> so again, the Calvin cycle has a couple of things. The Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma. It does not occur inside the thylakoid, whereas the light reaction occurs on the thylakoid, uh, on and within the thylakoid. The, the Calvin cycle occurs within the chloroplast, but outside the thylakoid in the stroma, the space between the thylakoids. Um, and then again, three steps to the process. And, um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna refer you to this video. This video is in your text, okay? Uh, I'm gonna refer you to this video to learn more about the Calvin cycle. They, as I say, when this page loads, you'll click the start button. There's a wonderful video in here that's gonna do a much better job explaining the Calvin cycle than I was gonna be able to try to create nice graphics within a day. It's already exists, let's go look at it. When this video loads, again, click on the page, go to the page, I'll put this in today's page, uh, the link for it. Page loads, you'll have a start button. It's not YouTube, that's what I'm getting at. This is not a YouTube thing, this is a different website. The page will load, there'll be a start button, click the start button, it'll start up this video. If you wanna watch the first 734, 
it's going to be a nice summary from a different perspective of everything I've talked about to this point. But if you just want to hear about the Calvin cycle and see the cool animations there, start that video, skip ahead in that video to 735 and watch till at least 923. It's only about a 10 minute video. I suggest watching the whole thing if you've got the time. But if you're really pressed and Steve, I just need to learn about the Calvin cycle because you didn't make a video on the Calvin cycle. OK, it's from 735 to 923 in this video. OK, I'm going to stop here. We'll pick up on the next video. We should be pretty close to done.